This is a hollow urethane casting that I made for my Angry Woman sculpture. I made it using the rubber blanket mold that you watched me make in the last video. In this video, I'll show you how I did it. I built this small wooden rotational molding machine basically out of scraps I had laying around the shop, just scrap wood and uh, some quarter 20 bolts. It's hand powered, it has no motors. It's just, uh, like I said, driven by hand, and I made it specifically for jobs just like this. I based the design on this machine, which is a large industrial strength rotator that I made years and years ago. It has electronic speed controls and really powerful DC motors. We used it for casting a whole variety of projects, um, including jobs like this, which were outdoor sculptures commissioned by the city of Claremont, California. But eventually, I sold that machine to a plastics manufacturer. Here's the rotator set up in their factory. We got it installed and wired and debugged and ready to run. They were planning to use it to make outdoor light fixtures. But enough of all this stuff. Let's get on to hollow casting this girl. Let's measure out some resin. First thing I'm going to do is mark the, mark the cup so that way I don't have to think about which is the A cup and which is the B cup. So let's weigh out some A. You can see that the scale is not balanced. I'll balance it for the cup, which is called tearing the scale. So let's just tap it with my little stick. Okay, scale is teared. Now we're gonna weigh out some part A. I'm gonna need 100 grams of part A and 100 grams of B. So let's set the scale Let's set it to 70 and see where we go. I don't like to dispense the resin from the big jug. I find it hard. It's easier to dispense it from a small cup like this. Okay, now we're going to sneak up on it. Very close. All right, that's 100 grams of A. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with the B side. Measuring out 100 grams of B side. So now I got 100 grams of A and 100 grams of B. And that is what we're going to need because I want to make a 200 gram shot in the casting the girl. And we'll do that next. Before we go on, I'm going to add some red dye to the B side. So we're going to wind up making kind of a pink casting of a girl. As you can see, I'm very careful not to touch anything with this red dye because it is nasty. And you definitely don't want to get it on your fingers if you can avoid it. Set that over there and let's see what kind of a red we got going on here. A little bit of red. Okay, so that's going to make a pretty red casting. All right, let us get the mold ready to go. And then we'll pour a shot. We got our A and B ready to go. Here's our mold that we made the other day. And now we're gonna go ahead and mount it onto the backer board and make it ready for uh, rotocasting. So as you can see, I made a bung and yes, it's actually called a bung. I think that comes from wine barrels. It's an old word. Anyway, I made a little plug. Actually, I think that's the hole. I think that's the bung. Either that or that's the bung hole and that's the bung. Who the hell knows? Anyway fits right in there, as you can see. And very nice, very nice tight fit. Rubber bands will hold that on. So let's get this mold assembled. And I'll start by putting it back in position where it was uh, when I built this backer board system. And we'll start by getting some rubber bands on it. I like rubber bands. I've tried a lot of different systems for holding molds onto backers or holding molds together. I've done a lot of different ways of screws, bolts, all kinds of fasteners, all kinds of clamps. And anytime you have a rubber mold, I find that it's most beneficial to have rubber bands hold the whole thing together. Just works better. So I try to position them so I know it's going to hold it on there. Got to jam it into place. And um, that's important. 
need to hold from all sides. Whoops, I keep bumping the camera. Sorry about that. Got to hold from all sides. Like that. Put that on there. See, already that's, that's pretty good. That's coming along. I've already got a nice hold. Let's put a few more on just to make sure. The rough surface of the mold actually is your friend because it helps you to, uh, it kind of helps to grip it, helps to keep it in place. So that's pretty good. And I think we'll just put this heavy band, one more decent heavy band around the middle, just as extra insurance. Like about there. All right. Looks pretty good to me. That's pretty good to me. I think that's going to work out okay. Let's get this thing on the cradle. That's next. I mixed up a batch of resin, 50 grams of A and 50 grams of B, and we'll stir it up really well. You don't have a lot of time, but you want to stir it up. Always, there's always this fight. It's time versus resin setup. All right, I'm going to call that a winner. Glad I made a pretty good sized bung hole because it makes it easier to pour. It's already getting warm. So we got to get this kid spinning. No time like right now. Shall we spin? Let's spin. Whoa, we're leaking. Okay, so it's leaking. Oh, shit. Shit, shit. I see where it's leaking. Well, that's quite humorous. This is why I put guards on my machine. It's leaking out of the screw holes. That's really funny. All right. It's leaking out of the screw holes. So we're going to concentrate this first charge down at the far end as opposed to the base end. And that's okay. That's okay. But uh, it did leak a little bit out of the screw holes that held the, the original screw holes. But it's just spinning up like a storm up here. Let's spin it in the other direction. So what you want when you spin a mold, and here I'm doing it entirely by hand, is you want random rotational motion. You want it to be as random as you can get it to be. It doesn't have to be all in one direction. In fact, it should be in every possible different direction. The idea here is, of course, to coat the mold evenly and not let the material pool up. You don't want the resin pooling up anywhere inside it. You want it constantly flowing around coating the surface on the inside. You know, there's this idea that people have about rotational molding that it's based on centrifugal force, that it's the spinning force that keeps the resin out against the walls. Could not be further from the truth. What's keeping the resin on the walls of the rubber is uh, stickiness. It's sticking to it. And uh, so if you put a, tr a large amount of resin in one time in the mold, what's going to happen is you'll always have a pool of resin pooling somewhere in the bottom of the mold. Wherever the bottom of the cavity is, that's where the resin is all going to run down into. There'll be too much material inside the mold for it to evenly coat. Basically, what I'd like to do is coat the interior of the mold without having any leftover resin pooling inside the mold cavity. Because if it pools inside the mold cavity, it's going to cure into a clump, like a baseball. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's take a look at our shot. Yeah, it's still, it's still liquidy enough to move. You should know, just for the sake of video, that I'm doing these in separate shots. In other words, I'm, I've made a couple of castings and I'm combining shots uh, from each casting. That's just simply about the mechanics of making the video. So if you see any continuity issues, then you know you're not watching a Steven Spielberg production. <laughs> you're watching me do this by myself in my shop in my, with my handy little rotator machine. And let's see, let's do our witness cup test. It's looking pretty good. It's still a little jelly, still got some jelliness to it. So we'll just keep it going. So I think that we got a pretty good first shot. Anyway, I hope so. Let's take a look at these holes on the bottom. Oh yeah, they're full now. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Let's see, how are we doing here? How's our charge? This is called a witness cup, and this will tell you. Oh yeah, it's done, said the king. All right, 
that was the first shot. Let's see how it goes. Okay, we're gonna do the second shot, just exactly the same as the first. Mixing up shot number two. Uh, leaks happen in rotational molding. They're just a fact of life in rotational molding. You just gotta accept that. So um, that's why I cover the machine with cardboard flaps. I call them mud guards, but they're really resin guards. Dump it, it's getting warm, I can feel it. My res is starting to heat up. And that's what we want. Pop in the bung. Okay, bung in there is nice. Put the rubber bands across the bung. Hold it down. And gorgeous, let's spin. Let us spin away. Now here I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the bottom of the mold because in the last shot, because of the leak of the screw holes, I focused more on the, on the top half. So here I'm focusing a little bit more on the torso, keeping the resin more down in this part of the mold. It's doing very nicely. There's very little uh, balancing that went on here because this mold is relatively light and the frame is relatively light. So I didn't really have to do the kind of balancing that I had to do on my big machine. Balancing was critical. When you get up to be doing really huge molds, like life-size, body-size molds, that sort of thing, or bigger, uh, then yeah, you're gonna spend some time balancing the mold. But not now. All right, how are we doing? Witness cup time. Oh, still runny, so it's still running in the witness cup. The witness cup tells me the state of the resin that's inside the mold. That's the genius of that, because I don't have to guess as to what's going on in there. I know what's going on there because this cup tells me. And so when that stuff is no longer flowing, then I know I can stop spinning the mold. It's getting there now. It's just sagging now, barely. But I'm going to keep it spinning until it doesn't sag anymore. Well, as long as it's spinning, it can't, it can't pick a direction to sag in. And that's the beauty of this. So we just keep it spinning. Back and forth, back and forth. Never going too much in one direction. It's better, obviously, to overcoat than it is to underpour because uh, then you know you've got a, a good casting or you're sh reasonably sure you've got a good casting. But, you know, you don't want it to be too thick-walled. You don't want to waste resin. Okay, I think that's telling me that the, uh, we're ready for the next shot. Beautiful. Okay, let's pull the bung. Okay, oh yeah, very, very nice. Pull the bung, cut it open. Yep, it's gelled. Huh. Our wall thickness is a good eighth of, almost an eighth of an inch. It's almost an eighth of an inch. It's pretty good wall thickness. It's not bad. When I'm, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just because I feel like that's a good idea. One more shot. All right, third shot. Third shot in the mold. Mix it up. So far, we're looking pretty good. Got the bung over there, ready to go. I am not seeing any buildup of res, or maybe a tiny bit of buildup of res on the bung, but comes right off. Should remember to do that between shots, but I didn't. No biggie, got it. Get this thing stirred, because that's important to stir it thoroughly, but at the same time, the last thing you want to do is take too much time on this step. Put that on my chest, just get that to hold, and we'll pour. Okay, so now like I said, I'm gonna do this pour with a more big frame orientation. Get the bung into place, put it in. Now the main, okay, well, let's go. Away we go. See, I'm going to spin the big frame, 
And as you can see, it's causing the little frame just under the kind of out of balance gravity to spin itself. So that's nice. Now keep your fingers out of there. <laughs> My big rotator, I showed you at the beginning of this video, could cut your hand off. It could kill you. I remember the engineer that helped me specify the motors and the pulleys and all that told me, don't try to stop this thing with your hand. It will pick you up and throw you across the shop. Now this little home version rotator, I call this an artist rotator, not a production rotator, because this is just perfect for the kind of project uh, that I'm doing here. It's just a simple, small little mold. Easy to rotate. And it doesn't take very long. As you see, it's, I'm averaging about five minutes of rotation per shot uh, before I need to uh, put in the next shot or before it gels enough. Now, the resin's not going to be cure in five minutes. It just needs to be gelled. I'm kind of digging how the out of balance causes it to rotate itself just by rotating the, the, uh, the, inner fr the outer frame. Let's see where our witness cup is saying. Sagging, it's at the sag stage, which means that it's not flowing. It's just kind of dripping, but hardly. It's just kind of sagging on the walls. So it's not quite yet ready to stop rotating. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it spinning. And then we are going to give it 20 minutes because it's, it's not a mass casting, because it's a thin wall hollow casting. I'm going to give it a full 20 minutes to cure, even though, but you know, the first shell is, has already been in there. I don't know, 15 minutes. So it's the first shell is probably pretty close to cured, but uh, we're going to let the whole thing, the whole system cure for a few more minutes after I stop spinning it. I'm almost ready to stop spinning. I'm seeing very little sag in the cup. Really loving my little rotator. This thing's fabulous. It's working like a champion. Sure, I'm glad I put those uh, mud flaps on there, those cardboard resin guards. <laughs> First shot, I got major spillage. Of course I did. It always happens. I'm telling you, you got to plan for spillage when you do this. That's why there's paper on the table, paper all around. You got to plan for spillage. All right, what are we doing here? Let's probe, shall we? Uh, it's, it's, it's tacky surface. It's, little, it's leather hard, but it's not sagging at all. So I think we're golden. I think we're good. I think I'll turn you off, and then I'll come back in 20 minutes, and, we'll, and you'll watch me pull the whole thing apart and start laughing if I screw it up. Right? You can see how this was attached, just a couple of clamps and uh, a couple of C-clamps and a couple of these little clamps. Love these little clamps, by the way. These are fantastic little Irwin grip clamps. Very nice. Let's undo the C-clamps. I uh, used to have all kinds of system bolts and nonsense to do it. I just discovered that C-clamps were the way to go. All right, so here we go. Excellent. Let's take the thing apart and we'll be ready to go. Excitement time. This is it. Let's see what we got. <laughs> It'll be really interesting. You never know. You just never know what you're going to get till you get it occurs to me that that might be a problem, but we'll see if I have to break that off of there. Yeah, I am going to have to break that off of there. Okay. Yeah. Those things are on there now. The, uh, the casting, because of this leak, the casting is stuck to the base, which means I'm going to have to be clever and thoughtful. And I probably have to, what it actually means is I'm going to have to drill those holes out, probably. Let's see. I was counting on being able to take that thing off of this. And maybe I can, and maybe I can't. 
Good thing this rubber has a very high modulus of elongation. That's what saves us here. Look at that. Look at her coming out of the mold. All right. Wow. Well, I made her nice and red, huh? I didn't mean to make her quite so pink, but not bad at all. Hard as a rock. Okay, so now what I'm going to have to do, there's our little drips right there. I'm just going to have to drill those holes out to, to release her from this base because I don't want to break the system. I just want to release it. So let me go do that. I'll do that on the drill press. You don't need to watch me do that nonsense. Uh, and then we'll pop it off. Okay, I got the holes drilled out and that broke her free, but I've discovered that she leaked a little bit of her down into the seam between the base and the, uh, and the back stop. So I think that what that means is that we're going to have to pick up this shorty screwdriver. I would have been happier picking up a bigger screwdriver, but you know what? It's working. So what do I care? Right? So let's just take this backer off. So that might be some place where I want to think about sealing it up or I do a subsequent shots. Yeah, that was all it was. See, it's just this little flap of, of resin went down in there, but it's all coated, so it's all beautiful. Wow, okay. Feels like a nice, really nice solid shell. I caught a little flaw in there. Let's see, I'm just, let's do flaw evaluation, shall we? Always do flaw evaluation. Boy, there aren't many. Tiny, tiny, tiny bubble there. Not bad, boy. Yep, pretty much captured the thing. You know, it doesn't get much better than that. When you get a, a first shot, I've seen a lot of times where the first couple of shots out of the mole were a disaster, but boy, she rotated up just fine. Very pleased. Couldn't be more satisfied. I think that we can move forward. There's gonna be some, some business back here and stuff, but I think the next step is gonna to be to go ahead and think about painting this girl. Nice, very happy. Nice solid casting. I don't hear any thin spots, nothing. Great, good job.